Hello and welcome everyone. Okay, today I will give a lecture on psychology of respiratory tract. Before we start, don't forget to fill in the attendance form. The link is attached in the UKM folio under this topic. Okay, let's begin. The respiratory tract pathology is heavily dependent on specimen type and preparation, which are including the sputum, bronchial material, transbronchial fine needle expiration, and transesophageal fine needle expiration. In the diagnosis of pulmonary diseases, cytologically, bronchoscopic is usually the first approach to be used. But if it is negative result, fine needle aspiration pathology can be performed next. Alright, let's start with the sputum. Sputum was one the most common respiratory tract specimen. Okay? Because it is relatively easy to obtain and causes little if any discomfort. However, today, system psychology is generally reserved for symptomatic individuals. For sample collection of system, early morning deep calf specimens and multiple system samples over several days are preferred. Then, examine the fresh system. 42 fragments, blood, or both. A simple method of sputum preparation is known as the pick and smear technique. For this technique, first, by using a wooden stick, spread the sputum thinly and evenly on the slide. Then, Immerse the slide in coffee jar containing 95% alcohol. After that, the slide is ready for staining process, such as the cup stain. Okay, next I will share the video of Sputum Smear Technique. I will attach the link of the video in the UKM folder. For sputum, in case it delays, where you cannot process the sputum directly, you can perform the sarcomano technique. So in this sarcomano technique, the sputum is collected in 60% ethanol and 2% carboac, the polyethylene glycol. And the specimen is then homogenized and concentrated by centrifugation method. The sarcomanos method must be performed in a biologic safety route as a result of the risk of infection okay, from aerosol. Then, the smears are obtained from the concentrated cellular material, it dry the slide, and ready for stain. Next, bronchial material. Improvement in sampling cells from the lower respiratory tract has occurred with the development of the flexible bronchoscope in the late 90s to 1960s. Today, any part of the respiratory tract can be sampled with this device. The complications of bronchoscopy, including laryngospasm, bronchospasm, and sepsis, are very rare. The bronchoscopic methods are particularly good for diagnosing central lesions in the pulmonary. Okay, first material, bronchial expiration and washing. Bronchial secretion can be aspirated directly from the lower respiratory tract through the bronchoscope. 
Bronchial washing can be performed by instilling 3 to 10 ml of saline, aspirate, then can be used. The fluid is tube and the concentrate used to make smears, thin layer preparations or cell blocks. Okay, cell blocks like this prepare for histology. Second, bronchial brushing. A brush is applied to the surface of an endobronchial lesion and the entrapped cells are smeared on a glass slide. If smears are made, you need immediate suggestion. Okay, by immerse in the 95% ethanol or use spray suggestion. Uh, the suggestion is important to preserve morphologic details. Okay. Third, bronchial alveolar lava or bulb. The bronchoscope is switched into position as far as it will go and distal airways are flushed with several aliquots of sterile saline. Okay, next is transbronchial FNA. It is useful for the diagnosis of primary lung lesions lying beneath the bronchial surface and to detect metastasis within labia spina lymph node. The lesion is aspirated by a retractable needle called Wong needle that is passed through a flexible catheter sent down the bronchoscope. Transbronchial FNA is accurate in distinguishing small cells from the non-small cell lung cancer. Yeah, the two subtypes of lung cancer. For transesophageal FNA, it can be performed endoscopically by passing the needle through the esophagus. For this technique, it is cost saving and reduce the number of unnecessary thoracotomy. Okay, let's learn about the scanning that you can perform after the preparation of respiratory tract pathology slide. Subscan, or its long name, perpendicular stain, is a polychromatic stain containing multiple dyes to differentially stain various components of the cell. Okay. You can use this stain to differentiate cells in the smear preparation of various specimens. Okay. From gynecological specimens, FNA materials, tumor touch samples, or other materials containing cells. For pup stain, it includes both acidic and basic dye, and it has five dyes in three solutions. So the solutions are hematoxylin, which stains blue to the nucleus, second, orange green six, or or D6. It is a cytoplasmic stain which stains matured and keratinized cells. The target structures are stain orange in different intensities. Third solution, yosin azure, which is a mixture of yosin white, light green SS, and Burst mark brown. For your thin white, it gives a pink color to cytoplasm of mature stem cells, nucleoli, cilia, and red blood cells. For light green SS, it stains cytoplasm of parabenthal stem cells, 
intermediate Clement cells and columnar cells. For Bismarck Brown, it stains nothing and sometimes it is often omitted. Here are the flow method of substain. You may pause the video to focus on the slide. Okay, for cytology reporting. In respiratory tract pathology, diagnoses are typically reported as negative for malignant cells. If you can't find the malignant cells. Or positive for malignant cells. Or di non-diagnostic, it is unsatisfactory result. And inconclusive diagnosis are commonly reported as atypical cells present, which is low suspicion, or suspicious for malignancy, okay, which is high suspicion. Now let's look at the respiratory cells morphology. First, we will look at the normal cell. Okay, the next image here is the normal ciliated bronchial cell from bronchial brushing. So if you look at the cell, they have oval nuclei and numerous cilia at the apical surface. For the right image, it is the pul pulmonary alveolar macrophages which are obtained from the system. The cells have abundant foamy cytoplasm and also contain black carbon particles. Now we will look into benign cellular changes in respiratory tract. Benign bronchial cell changes occur in response to harmful stimuli. Okay, such as radiation, chemotherapy, and severe inflammation. Okay, under such conditions, as shown in the left image, the cells may show marked nuclear size variation. However, the cilia are still the same, as you can see from the left image. For the right image, Reserve cell hyperplasia is displayed. Reserve cell proliferate occur when the surface epithelium of the respiratory tract is shed during lung injury. The cells may make the small cell carcinoma, but they are usually easily distinguished by their extremely small size and lack of necrosis. Cytology also plays an important role in diagnosing infectious disease. For example, tuberculosis as shown in the image here. Infection by mycobacterium tuberculosis commonly result in granulomatous inflammation. The specimen showed aggregation of epithelioid histiocytes, okay, which has a simpler appearance because individual cell borders are in this And here a table showing you a compilation of pathology characteristics for different types of pulmonary viral infection. Okay. But how about the typology of respiratory tract in COVID-19 patients? Okay. You may search it in the internet. Okay. However, I put here some images 
of the cytology, cytology of respiratory tract in COVID-19 patients. Okay. From the figure A, you can see that they have many clusters of activated plasma cells. And the left, the right image, which is B, it shows the alveolar macrophage with intranuclear cytopathic inclusion. Okay? Means that the cytoplasm is included in the nucleus. These two images I got it from Dr. Francis Carbon. Okay. Now we move to the cytology characteristics in benign neoplasm of the lung. First, pulmonary hamartoma. Cell in pulmonary hamartoma commonly show fibromyxoid and cartilaginous material. Also, epithelial cells and adipocytes can often present in pulmonary hematoma. Next, after benign, we move to the malignant cells. Let's start with the squamous cell carcinoma of the lung. As shown in the image, cytomorphology reveals a well differentiated squamous cell carcinoma. The cells come in a variety of shapes, have dense orangeophilic cytoplasm, and hyperchromatic. The cells also commonly have pyknotic nuclei. And here is the image of poorly differentiated SVC of the lung. The carotinization is less apparent or absent in the cytology sample. Some cytoplasm for poorly differentiated SVC may retain the characteristic of well differentiated SVC. However, some cytoplasm are tan and less dense. The nuclei are larger and nucleoli are prominent. Next is lung adenocarcinoma. The cell morphology are usually having honeycomb arrangement. The nuclei are eccentrically placed, round or irregular. They have large nucleoli and finely textured chromatin. The cytoplasm are translucent and forming. As shown in the image below, honeycomb arrangement can be seen in lung adenocarcinoma cells. Next small cell, sorry, next is large cell carcinoma or LCC. Okay. The cells are often arranged in single cluster. Single meaning that multinuclear cells which can result from multiple cell fusion of uninuclear cells. The nuclei are large and either round or markedly irregular with irregularly distributed cross chromatin. Nuclei are usually quite prominent okay, in LCC. The cytoplasm is ill-defined, meaning that it is unclear and have feathery cytoplasm. Next is small cell carcinoma 
for SMC. Cytologically, SMC consists of small cells with scant cytoplasm. Okay, with little cytoplasm. In some cases, the cells are larger with more cytoplasm and vesicular nuclei. The nuclei is carrot shaped, meaning that it has round, oval, or stretched out shape. The cells are evenly dispersed and have powdery chromatin. Adjacent nuclei show frequent molding. The nuclei are small to indistinct. Okay. The cytoplasm can contain occasional paranuclear blue bodies, the background of nuclear debris and crush artifacts is also common in SMC. Next is metastatic cancers to the lung. The metastatic cancers are commonly from the breast cancer, colon cancer, renal carcinoma, bladder cancer, and melanoma. Here are some of the cytological characteristics of the metastatic cancer to the lung. Okay, for colon carcinoma, the characteristic of thick fan. While for melanoma, intranuclear cytoplasmic impregnation. And for breast carcinoma, mucin containing intracellular lumen. And for renal cell carcinoma, it has abundant clear cytoplasm. Alright, immunohistochemistry markers can facilitate the distinction between primary lung cancer and metastatic cancer. Okay, in case you have done the cytology slide examination, but you find inconclusive answer. Okay, you cannot differentiate whether it is from the lung cancer itself or whether it is from the metastatic cancer. So, the final solution is you can perform immunohistochemistry markers. Okay. Example immunohistochemistry markers that can differentiate between primary lung cancer and metastatic colorectal cancer are CK7 and CK20. Okay, the result is very concerning. Here are some more I had markers for mm. breast cancer origin and prostate cancer origin. Also, the immunohistochemistry markers can help to differentiate between lung chymocyte carcinoma and lung adenocarcinoma subtype. Okay, I put the markers in this box. However, Caution should be taken when interpreting the CTF1 marker result. Because CTF1 may also be positive in thyroid cancer and some cases of colorectal carcinoma. Alright, that's all for the cytology of respiratory tract. Don't forget to sign the attendance form. Okay, that's all from me. Goodbye and take care everyone.